Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the Orion Observer 134 Newtonian Reflector. This is a brand new telescope. I just bought this recently. And it has uh, some very positive things and some extremely negative things as well. First of all, the optics on this telescope are beautiful, absolutely sweet. This is a Newtonian reflector. It's uh, 650 millimeters focal length, about five inches in aperture, which is a nice, sweet kind of a, a size. It's a, a nice focal length, nice aperture to be able to see some interesting things in the sky. So this scope, when I got it, of course, was not in perfect collimation, so I had to uh, adjust the collimation. That's something that for a beginner would probably be really intimidating. For me, I uh, collimated dozens and dozens of Newtonians. So anyway, when I got that done, it uh, delivered an image and uh, I cannot express to you how astounded I was by the image produced by this telescope. When I first saw the image in this thing, I would, my, my jaw hit the ground and I could not believe it. It's such a beautiful piece of optics here. Uh, and I bought this thing cheap. It was a little over $200 for this. So it was really astounding that any telescope in that price range could deliver that kind of an image. Even one with, this is a slightly compromised design here, this extremely long focuser here, that's weird, unnecessary, and uh, fairly undesirable as far as I'm concerned. There's really no reason to do that. But uh, anyway, even with the optical compromises involved here, this thing is just perfection. I compared this with a 4-inch ED apochromat of about the same focal length, um, slightly smaller aperture, and this thing does just as good a job as this much more expensive ED apochromat 4 inches. So it's a beautiful telescope in terms of the optics. The performance on this thing is extremely good. Even with the inexpensive eyepieces, it comes with a couple of inexpensive, like a, a Plossel and a Super Plossel or something. They're, they're obviously pretty cheap, but they deliver a pretty good image. They're fine. I also, of course, tried my Teleview Nagler in it and so forth, and it's, uh, th those work equally well. The 6x30 finder is not great. But it's okay. It's it's not bad. It's and especially in a, a telescope this price range, uh, that's not bad at all. This this is quite good. So from here on up, beautiful. Everything is wonderful. Great story. From here on down, different story. Disaster. Oh my goodness. I have never seen an equatorial mount that is such a nightmare. This thing is horrible. I'm not talking about a little bit of frustration. I'm talking about extreme frustration, even for somebody like me. I know what I'm doing. I've dealt, dealt with lots and lots of telescopes, lots of equatorial mounts. This thing is horrible. They've somehow taken a bad design and made it even worse in this particular mount. So it's just awful. I'll go over some of the details with you here in a minute. So what am I to make of this scope? Uh, when I saw the performance of the scope, uh, my instinct was immediately, well, the mount is terrible. It sucks so bad, the thing has to go back. Um, and then I kept thinking about the image through this, <laughs> through this telescope. And I kept thinking, oh, that image is so good. I have seldom seen that nice an image from any kind of a Newtonian, um, let alone a, an inexpensive one. As a result, I'm stuck with it now. <laughs> it's been passed. I'm passed by 30 days, so I can't return it now. Um, and I wouldn't want to anyway. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to throw the mount away, uh, put this on a better mount. Uh, I'll show you. I've got lots of better, lots of better telescope mounts, and this telescope performs beautifully. Uh, oh, just sweet, wonderful. Let me show you some of the problems with the mountain. Give you some ideas. If if you got stuck with one of these. Um, how would you fix it? What would you do? How would you fix it? How would you deal with this defective, horrible, nightmarish mount? I've got some ideas, some things I've tried that uh, actually helped a little bit. So if you're stuck with one of these, I maybe have some assistance for you coming up.
Well, let me show you a couple of the problems with this mount. I've loosened this up. This nor normally would tighten it down. There's a, a, another nut down there that tightens it. I loosened it up so I can just so I can turn it around and show it to you. Um, this is your right ascension slow motion. This is your declination. On all sane telescope mounts, the declination follows the telescope. This part here rotates. The whole part rotates. On this one, it doesn't. So when you t when you turn the aim the telescope in declination somewhere else over here, like you lock it down. Now your declination control is still down here. You may think that's good, but it, it's not. It's hard to figure out where that thing is. When you get this into some interesting configurations, this knob can become unfindable uh, at night. So you just can't figure out where the where the stupid thing is. Normally, you would put the declination on a Newtonian, put it out here somewhere where it'd be nice and easy to reach. The right ascension would be somewhere near the, where the mount is. So this that's uh, uh, they've done this just to keep it cheap. They've made this cheap here, um, and they've uh, you know it's it's very inexpensive. You can tell they cut the cost here. This mount is one of the cheapest I've ever seen. It's just as cheap as they can be. Uh, it barely holds the telescope up off the ground. It's got a couple of good features. One of them is that this clamp here, this, is, this takes a standard Vixen dovetail, which is good because the telescope can removed, be removed easily. Let me show you that. Let me get the telescope. This clamp, I loosen it up. This will slide right out. So that goes right in. And that's nice because this is more or less universal. Many mounts will accept the Vixen dove, dovetail these days. So, uh, so that's good. So you can take it off and do that. And that's one of the good things about this mount. But here's another really interesting bad one. Uh, I can't believe they did this. <clears throat> here's a counterweight down here. Let me rotate this and show it to you. Over here on this side, Normally, on any sane mount, they would have um, a way of mounting the slow motion knob over here. So you'd be able to take this knob. Instead, with this one, they've replaced that with this gear. Now, they definitely intend for you to buy a clock drive, because all this nonsense here is simply so you can buy a nice expensive clock drive and put it on here, a completely unnecessary thing for this kind of telescope anyway. So that's what this is all about. Well the problem is that sometimes depending on where you are in the sky this knob is going to get in the way over here. I think you can see that. Let me show you a little bit better. See how if I have this sticking out over here and the telescope wants to be over there. Whoopsie whoop whoop. Well you can bend this and all that and oh what a pain. Normally, you would just take this off, put it on the other side. And normally, with a decent, healthy, sane equatorial mount, you would be able to exchange that. But you can't with this mount. What a terrible thing. Neither of those is horrible or fatal. The one thing that really is fatal with this mount is... Hmm, look at that. Look how shaky that is. You can see it shaking and wobbling. Is there anything you can do about that? Well, there are a few things you can do about that. Um, the first thing you can do is take a nice big heavy weight. This is about a 10 pound weight. Put that right there. Now that helps to stabilize things. What will happen here is it will still shake a little bit, but it will quiet down a little bit more rapidly. It's damped a little bit by this extra weight here. In addition to that, you can get a set of these. These are vibration suppression pads. Uh, you don't have to buy the, uh, the ones from Orion. You can buy them a lot less expensively. You can get a set of these for about $30 on Amazon. I don't make any money off it, folks. Just a recommendation. Anyway, you can get some of these, and they work quite well. These are, are superb. You put these under the feet, under each foot, and that will help to dampen the vibrations more rapidly. It cuts the vibration time down to about half. So both of those things will help, but this mount is so shaky 
It's so wobbly that neither of those is really sufficient. You need to do something else. So now we've got this thing. It was in equatorial mode. It was aimed theoretically at Polaris. Now you can change this. This mount is designed so that if you loosen this up, you can come back here all the way back to this position. Lock it down. Notice that I need to keep the counterweight there. The counterweight is necessary to, of course, counterbalance the weight of the telescope. Balancing this is just a matter of a little practice, and you can learn how to do that. Now I'm going to rotate the tube here. This clamps, just unloosen those a little bit, rotate the. Now you come around here. Now you've got an Alpha As telescope. We're going to loosen all these clamps so that now it becomes free to rotate. See what I mean? It's now an Alpha As telescope. And this actually will perform a bit better for you than in the equatorial mode. Don't even bother with these clamps and locks. I mean, you may want to, you may need to rotate this thing around in different positions depending on, you know, this, this will interfere in some places. So you might have to rotate this around, lock it da back down after you do that. And then you can use this telescope like so. It's actually pretty comfortable. You don't have slow motions. You have to push it. But it works a little bit better. The best solution is to put it on a different mount completely, throw this one away, like what I'm going to do with this one. Another trick you can try is to put this as close to the ground as possible. A lot of the shakiness comes from these very thin, flimsy aluminum legs here. Um, that's another thing yet you could do is replace the legs with something made out of wood if you're handy and you've got some spare wood laying around you, maybe you could replace the legs. Um, anyway, that's another thing is to keep it low, that'll help to stabilize it, uh, make it a little bit more user friendly or user possible, shall I say. So you could maybe use it this way. Um, best thing to do is put it on a different mount. Let me show you. With this Vixen dovetail, this will go on a lot of mounts. This is a classic Goto Kogaku from the 1970s, 1980s. I made an adapter for it so it will take Vixen dovetails. Just about any reasonable mount these days will be able to accept this Vixen dovetail telescope. Now you're talking. Now you've got a real mount here. Now we've got, see how the declination remote control is always right there? Right there handy, right there at the front of the scope. You can put it at the back of the scope too for a, reflect, a refractor. Anyway, that is a much nicer outfit. This one happens to have a clock drive. Of course, you can uh, use it with a manual drive as well. So you can use it with hand controls just like the other one. Only this, one, of course, is really steady. This is rock, rock steady. It's just beautiful. So there's the way to use this telescope. Now you've got a really good quality German equatorial mount and a really good quality telescope on it. There are lots of different options for an equatorial mount. If you're a newbie, I don't know what to tell you, except that it's, uh, you've got some learning to do to get, it, get yourself into a decent equatorial mount. The best thing to do is, if you can return the scope, get it back to Orion, and if Orion will exchange it, get their Star Blast. You've got an, uh, there's an Orion Star Blast for about the same price. It's a little bit smaller telescope, not much. It's about four and a half inches rather than the five or so that this one is. So it's a little bit smaller scope, but it's on a Dropsonian mount much, much better, far superior to the equatorial mount that comes with this Orion scope. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Orion Observer 134 equatorial telescope. Thank you very much for watching.